in this week's episode, I'm talking to my friend and boss, Natalie Click from ThoughtWorks in the UK, about how she got into sourcing, building a sourcing team, and what this agile sourcing is all about. How did you actually get into sourcing? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I think I actually went back to the days of when I first started in the industry. I joined McGregor Boyle, an agency, and I really enjoyed actually going through job boards, but creating Boolean strings within those job boards hmm. and digging deeper that way to start with. Um, and then realized I actually was really good at finding the people. And it used to really annoy me that the account managers would then take my candidates, put the pitch them into a client and make the money on it. And I'd get pittance in comparison to what they'd make on a, a, a placement. And then I was like, you know what, this, this is a thing. I'm, I'm really good at finding people. And so I just carried on with an agency, but became an account manager, but delivering, always focusing on that delivery piece of finding people. Um, there were a couple of other really great people I worked with. And we used to compete constantly in agency to try and find the best people really quickly before the big agencies did and things. And then that's always been my niche, I guess, is being able to find people in different places before anyone else gets there. And when you're doing contract recruitment, which is where I started, I definitely focused on speed and having to really dig deep really fast because I knew I had to beat those competitors who had large databases and things and that's pretty much how I got into it and then realized that actually it was a thing that sourcing was a thing not just finding people because I remember I heard of you first time in world's greatest sourcer um I, I always monitored kind of which Europeans were doing part of that and I was like hold on there's somebody I haven't heard of and she's based in the UK and she's in London I you I can... just came into the whole sourcing world late in the game I think I've always done it I didn't know there was a job for it. I didn't know there was a title for it until quite late. Um, but I've always known that that's been what I'm good at. Yeah. But I, didn't, I don't think I ever knew there was a hackathon for it or a world's greatest sourcer or even a SourceCon. I, I had no, I've never, before probably coming to SourceCon, I hadn't really heard of any of the big greats before. And now I speak among them and it's an amazing position for me to be in. But I... I never followed these people before because I just didn't know this world existed before I actually came into it as a yeah. Obviously, I'm a bit biased because I'm, I'm in your team, but tell me a bit about kind of what you do now and, and the, the team that you work with and, and how, you, how you came up with that and how you got started. So I came back from maternity leave in 2017, um, knowing that I didn't want to just come back into being a recruiter because for me, sourcing is the thing I love most and I wasn't getting the time to do it. So the Christmas Eve 2016, I spoke to our head of recruitment, global head of recruitment, and said to her, I really think there's a, we're missing a trick with sourcing. And we did some research. I sent her a deck that I prepared of a lot more research to back my findings around sourcing. And she was like, yeah, let's just do this. And February of 2017, I was, before I came back from Matleave, I was in the office for three days on a global face-to-face -face recruiting visioning session. And we worked through what it was going to look like and how we were going to build this sourcing center of excellence that was allowed to ensure sourcing grew at ThoughtWorks. And we gave people the space, the capability to source and the understanding of why sourcing was important. And since then, it, it's grown. And we've hired people like yourself and Ika and Aaron and it's taken legs and we, we've trained people like Usher who before that had never even heard of sourcing and just having had that hour session with me it piqued her interest and now it's taken her so much further in her career. I remember as well like following you on Facebook and then seeing okay I'm starting a sourcing team anybody know anybody that could kind of help me with that um, and then you ended up working with Balash um, which is just fun to kind of see um, you know, him bringing in and coming with obviously with his experience from building um, building a large team in Budapest. Um, so how was that kind of working? And you know, yeah, where did you start? And and how who did you kind of get to help? Like other than Balaj and and in in terms of that. So I went to True London um, and I kept telling everyone this is what my plans are. So I'm thinking of doing. And everyone was like, you want to speak to Balash? So I was like, hey. And I did some research and I saw these amazing prezzies he's done around 
sourcing functions. And I stole the entire thing and pitched it to our global team as this is what we need to do. Um, but realized I didn't actually have the backing of the knowledge he was sharing and how he built it. So I then asked him for some consulting and support and he became my external mentor for a good six months and whilst we were building the center of excellence at ThoughtWorks and it was an amazing time for us to really learn together um i think we both learned a lot from different organizations balash i think saw a true diverse organization for the first time and also a very agile organization where we are able to experiment and trial different things and learn and move on and i learned so much about the wider scope of what a sourcing function needed and there were things around data and privacy that I hadn't even thought about and he was like yeah yeah this is really important and I was like okay um speaking to my tech ops and realizing yes this was really important and uh we carried on like that and he just opened my eyes to a world of sourcing and then last year got me on stage with him as well at SOSU in Amsterdam where we got to share our story and watching his story now evolve as well has been amazing no and it's it's where i also got the details of like what what are you actually building and not just kind of snippets from facebook and and linkedin about what's going on um, and yeah where we we met actually in person for the first time and uh, and ended up yeah ended up working together based on that because it's like i knew what you were building and i bought 100 percent into that i wanted to be part of it it was meant to be, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so tell me a bit about where that's gone today. What are you working on now that's exciting you? And, and what's, what's the future look like for that team? So I think the ROI for us has been really, really good. We've proven why we should be doing what we're doing to the point where they've just said, grow, go build a sourcing team, make it bigger, make it better. It's all like it's a really ambitious mission now to grow from 5,000 to 10,000 in the next four years. So we, with rapid growth, need to expand our team to support that kind of growth. Um, so we're probably going to be looking at creating a sourcing hub out of uh, Bangalore in India, where we want our sources to work how we work now, um, in a very agile way, pairing together, sourcing together, sourcing together, and um, ensuring that they keep what we've built now but in a co-located space because we're all, all remote right now, it'll be amazing to see the results you can get actually working together, sitting together every day and, and really supporting our regions in growth. In terms of tools and in terms of processes, what, how do you work and, and what tools do you use and you know, what's your kind of process in terms of sourcing? Most of my tools are not the likes of the crazy stuff around scraping and things like that i'm not very good at that i don't have the time really to do that so for me most of my tools are time saving tools i like productivity tools so you can book me um text expander so saving all my templates so i can literally one click and it comes up for me um multi highlight really helps me just to view things fast when i'm looking at a profile somewhere um and then on um Things like automation, really enjoying working with Lemlist makes email outreach so much faster when you don't have to send one at a time. Um, I don't think any other tools that I really am enjoying at the moment. Um, they're probably my main everyday tools that I use daily. There's so many, obviously, we, we hear about, we speak about, we trial, um, but I don't get a chance to play every day with those kind of things. For anybody that hasn't kind of heard, we spoke about the way that we work as a team uh, in London. A lot of people have heard about it, talked about it. We what we call agile sourcing. What's that been like? What's you know what kind of process have we done, and and where do you see that going for our team and and for the kind of industry in general? So, having had my eyes opened by yourself to why aren't we working in a more agile way? This makes more sense. This is what we need to be doing. And me having to take that step back as a lead and thinking, do we need that disruption? Is that the right thing for us? And understanding actually it was the right thing for us. We had so many different issues that were creating blockers for us, whether it be lacking of visibility, changing requirements, being remote and not really understanding what each other were doing. Um, and then things like how do we scale what we're doing as well to today where our team has become this accountable visible 
fast environment where we have moved from being ad hoc and taking requests and saying, yeah, we can work on your role to actually, yeah, we're going to put your role into a prioritized list of things now where we can actually see where we're going to be at what point we can estimate, we can give manage expectations for our stakeholders uh, and ourselves as well are being able to manage how much we can bring in at one time and not feel overwhelmed. I was talking to someone today that I was interviewing and he was like, you know, I want to make sure that if we hire people, they're not going to be burnt out. And I said, you know, our team, you don't get burnt out because we're able to see what everyone's doing. And at any point we can pull back and say, well, you're, you're doing too much. Do you slow down? This one needs to support you and we can help you with this and help you with that. So it just allows for so much more collaboration of a team um, and supporting of a team. And, and therefore everyone's so much happier and having much more fun. What did we do? We <laughs> have introduced so many different things. So our daily stand-ups, I think, have been really really cool um i love being able to see the team every day and just sharing i know we get distracted most days by seeing each other and wanting to chat about what tool eek has come up with and what aaron's been doing in the north america team but just being able to see really quickly who's having blockers and who needs support and who's done amazing work that day already because we have our stand-ups later on in the day for us we're able to really understand what we need to do the following days paired sourcing has been one of the best things everyone's learning from each other even i learn from some of our junior team members because they think differently to me and having that difference of mind allows us to bring in more diversity learn how to search differently challenging each other um, and just opens our pipeline to such a diverse set of candidates as well as a diverse search so it's yeah that's been a really eye-opener for me um but also the quality piece because when we're challenging each other is that the right profile would you put that in would you have put that in it allows us to actually bring that quality so much higher for the hiring partner that we've noticed when they have that calibration a calibration of goods that is so much higher than the nose because we've got it we understood it we've asked each other we've challenged each other and it's made us question it far earlier than we probably would have done otherwise and therefore you'd hope less candidates needing less outreach needing less time to fill because you've nailed it in your first search rather than in your second third or fourth we've coined the phrase sourcing i think you and i came up with this together um swarming in agile is when all the developers get together we have by the word swarming and sourcing and come up with sourcing where we all work on one role together so that we can create a long list really really fast probably within a day how many people are able to put a list of 100 people together in one day um and be proud to say you know this is what we've done and this is what we're able to do and, and move on to the next really quickly um i think that's a really special way of working and i would never want to change that now because it's definitely it's improved our velocity fundamentally for you know the future of how we grow then we have again i mentioned about um, accountability visibility having things like our trello board are allowing us to really track where we are in each progress i look at it probably three or four times a day to make sure i know where we are and what we need to be doing moving our cards through the steps to ensure that we allow the team to understand what needs to happen next and, and where we're really seeing blockers of something sitting in one place for too long and then just putting things into sprints as well. So um, our sprint cycle has allowed us to estimate, to manage expectations of ourselves, of our, of our hiring partners. And it's been a really interesting thing having week one, the, out, the long list, short list to long list feedback, week two, outreach, whether it be you know, first or second outreach, week three, follow up more outreach, phone screens if we're doing them, week four, we get to done. And we can move on to the next thing quite happily knowing that we have done what we had set out to do for that particular sprint um, and, and that user story and, it, and it's made sense for the customer and for us. What's something that you would want to do but haven't had time for yet? I have a huge pile of books sitting next to me. Yeah. When I get time, I'd love to read. I keep buying them thinking, yes, this book looks amazing and I can learn from it. And I, all these thought leaders tell me about these books I should be reading. So I buy them and they just pile up and up and up and I don't read them um i'd love more time to really step back from the everyday and start planning longer term if you know if our scale is to grow in the next four years 
how is that going to happen? What's it going to look like? What do we need to invest in? Um, for me, I feel like we're really lacking a CRM right now. We use greenhouse as our ATS and it doesn't have a strong enough CRM for us. Um, we can't touch things like leather because they don't want to work with uh, greenhouse. Lemlist is good, but probably only for a, a certain scale. And, and as we grow, we need something that can attach to greenhouse that they can talk to each other and we can start creating net campaigns to allow for far more process of when someone comes into our talent pool they're not ready to opt in to be a thought worker right now but they want to be net they want to continue on that journey we i'd love for a, a far better and cleaner approach to that um and then better reporting i think as well so we do all our reports very manually we're able to pull off all the data from greenhouse um, and then have to manipulate it ourselves i'd love for better reporting for ourselves as well most ATSs track the owner of a job at any point and not really the source and, and where it came from. So we're lacking that piece for us of how we can manage the source of piece earlier on. Um, so yeah, it's very much defined by the recruiter rather than the sourcer model. And because of that, the visibility quickly for us as a, as a leader and as a team, we, uh, we lack that quick view of where we are but that's been since day one as well so i've wanted to change it from the beginning we're now nearly a year and a half down the line and we're still nowhere near getting that done and that's something i want to see change one of the things as well that i found remarkable and and i love by working with you as well is seeing you balancing the job between what we do and the, like being a leader for the team and being a mom. Um, and that's in the way that you work, how the team is set up and the way that you're working hours are. How did you kind of get to that? It's a good question. Um, sometimes it freaks me out how I do do it. Um, I have two kids, one six and one nearly two. So one's at full-time nursery or with my mom and the other one's at full-time school. So that helps. Having a close family around me can't take it for granted it's so helpful and I don't know what I would do without my wider support network I think a lot of what you've got to do when you have a lot of other priorities outside of work is to plan and block your time and say actually no I'm not going to do that you know work is important but my family is also important and I'm going to do my eight hours a day and sometimes I'll do a few more but it will not impact my kids. So my diary is blocked. I start at nine, I finish at four. I have between four and eight with my kids. And then three days a week, I do an extra two hours in the evenings between eight and 10 so that I can be global and I can talk to people in North America, Australia. But at the same time, I it doesn't impact my kids. They never see me working and they don't have to deal with, oh, mommy's at work. But they always see me after school and I'm present. And I had a mum who was home every day so i think when you you have you want what you had and i i want my kids to know that i'm their mum and i'm not going to be working and you know i'm very very lucky i work for thoughtworks i have that flexibility i have the ability to actually say these are my working hours and this is going to work for me if i was in a consulting world at thoughtworks i don't think i'd have that same flexibility because we are on customer side and it's not so easy but when you're in an operational role at ThoughtWorks, you have a lot of flexibility to be that mum, to lead a team, to work. Um, no one else said to me, these are the hours you can and can't work. I've sort of made them myself and empowered myself to make that decision. But no one's pushed back and said, this isn't working for us. I think I'm always present as well. So I always have things like uh, Google Hangouts on my phone. So if anyone wants me at any time, even when I'm not working, I'm there. So even when I'm not there, people feel like I'm there. So I've never had the feedback that I'm not available to anyone. And so being available makes it, I think, easier to manage. Um, but also making sure that you have your level of what's acceptable for you. This is my acceptable. I work hard and, you know, it's hard being a mum and it's hard being a full-time employee at the same time. But... I love both. And so I have to find a balance. If people want to follow you, uh, the team at ThoughtWorks, um, what the future will bring with agile sourcing, how can they best do that? 
I guess following some of our Twitter accounts and seeing what we're doing, um, we're quite active on all the sourcing groups on Facebook and things. So when we want to talk about anything, we pretty much put it on there. Um, both you and I speak at conferences. So, so Sue, SourceCon, big shout out. I've got my purple squirrel sitting with me all day long. Um, and hopefully, you know, this will continue. I know you and I have plans to write a book about agile sourcing as well. So I'm sure that will be on everyone's bookshelves and book lists one day if we get around to doing it and find the time. Um, and then I guess just reaching out to us because we are really open to sharing what we're doing. And I've had so many people ring us and message us on LinkedIn saying, hey, I loved what you spoke about. I really want to implement it. How can I do that? And eventually we want to get into a place with ThoughtWorks where our team becomes more advisory as well. So a bit more like ThoughtWorks as a consultant does and going to customers and actually helping them to transform. So whether it's through having a, a new sourcing function, whether it's understanding how to be more agile, um, I feel like our team can really start to support that in the future for lots of organizations. So not just ringing us for a quick chat and understanding how they can do things, but allowing us to come in and, and understand the brand and how we can really support that change for them and that transformation. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, thank you for letting me be part of that as well. Thank you for coming and joining us. And I would not want you to be anywhere else right now. That's the same. Absolutely. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back next week with a new sourcing conversation. If you want to be one of the first ones to hear about it, make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications.